Hi, you're with Fossil Crates on location in central Montana. I'm Dr. Brian Curtis. And I'm Jacob Jett. And today we're going to talk about how to scout for fossils. It's a great, great challenge of finding these fossils. Not that they don't want to be found, they're dead, but where are they? Where's Waldo? Yeah, so the way we find fossils is we first get permission to look on the ground that we're going for. We find where the right aged exposure of rock is. You technically could in some situations find a fossil out in a field full of grass, but it's gonna be really hard and you're not gonna to see too much. So if you look around me, you'll see a lot of exposed rock. This is called Badlands Country. This is rock that has been sitting in place since the Cretaceous and now it gets eroded very quickly, exposes a lot of fossils for us to be able to go out and find. So when we're walking around, you're looking for various markers. So the easiest markers are color. You can find a, a light gray and you know you're in this Judith River formation. There'll be a darker concretionary sandstony layer, which is unlikely to have any fossils in it out here. Uh, sometimes you get these, the sea came over the top and it has a different look and feel to it. So not just color, but texture of the rock as well. Another thing to consider when you're looking at rock texture though, is what's on top versus what's underneath. And the rock on top out here, a lot of it's popcorn, we call it. It looks like popcorn. It's crumbled up, it's broken, and fossils on the popcorn layer are almost always broken up. They've been brought up from underground up under the surface, thanks to erosion and freezing and thawing cycles. Root zones are another area where you can find hints of fossils because the grass roots have gone down into the bone, broken the bone up, the bone pieces will fall down. And you often want to be walking on the bottoms of the hills along stream beds because the, the bones tumble down. So you're looking for fossil fragments on the ground and then you try to find where they eroded out as you go up the ledge. Right, so when you first find a fragment of bone, you take a step back before you do anything else and see if there's anything else there. If there are more pieces, you start looking at them and seeing if they move up the hillside. As you trace more and more pieces up the hillside, if you're lucky enough that they're actually there, most of the times they aren't, but when you find more pieces, you trace them up until hopefully you find a bone that's actually poking out of the side of the rock, and that's what tells you where to dig. And when you are out here in the field, you, you need to know the formations, the geology. So you have to have done your homework on the front end to know the kinds of rocks that you're looking for. So there are certain layers that there's just not going to be any dinosaur fossils in. So you can skip past those. Uh, a great example would be if some kind of igneous intrusion, lava has come up from above and moved in. Well, you don't find fossils in lava because it melted them all. So they may have died because of the lava, but they certainly didn't get preserved. So you can walk right past those. So when you come out, you may think, I'm never gonna find the fossil, but your eyes acclimate and you quickly start learning what's not a fossil and eventually it pops out at you. 